Hello, good day. Welcome back to the video series in merging the Object Oriented Programming 2 and Database Management System 2. The objective of this video series is for you to create a program that can connect and able to perform different queries in the database. This video is the third that will show you how to perform selection query in MySQL and embedding it to a Java program. To start, open NetBeans. Once you open, all you need to do is open another program which is a internet browser to download our backup. Uh, last time when our, uh, we ended up in uh, uploading our backup in our Google Drive. So we will access it and download it for us to continue. So open your Chrome and log in your Google account and visit uh, drive.google.com so right now we have our backup projects you can open it now and look for the last uh, uh, uploaded backup so last time we have the 329 okay so we'll up, um, we can just directly download the folder so that we can download the two So we will wait for a moment to download the file. So once it is downloaded, you can now open here, show in folder, and you can now start extracting your file. Extract, okay, you just leave at the default that you will see it on the downloads uh, folder. So once it is downloaded, you can now see uh, the MySQL file and then the uh, your project file. Okay, so all we need to do is to go back to NetBeans and open this project. Click this icon, open project. Then go to the downloads. Browse a little bit and find downloads. Then look for the folder that you have downloaded a while ago so double check if that is the exact folder this folder is 329 uh, inside of this folder 329 so look for that one 28 am so i think this is the folder the third one open it okay this is 39 am and i will just open this one open project so as we can see we can now load our uh what we have left okay the next once we finish on uh, opening our project we can now turn on again our SAMP to import our SQL file. So go to drive D, find folder for the SAMP, and go to the bottom part, then open SAMP control. Then run Apache server and my sql next go go back to chrome open a new tab and open php my admin wait for a moment to load up everything as we can see we have already uh, our database last time i forgot to delete it so for for educational purposes for you to know how to lead also here in PHP my admin we can just use the SQL command uh, queries here to actually use the syntax for drop database and the name of the database
assuming that we already uh, drop this one look for the full uh, icon go so once it is uh, execute you can now see that the database is already here uh, gone so assuming uh, that this is where we'll uh, we start off next thing that we need to do when we open PHP my admin is to create a new database the same name what we had a uh, top up last uh, a while ago this is um, John uh, what is the name of our database I forgot let at uh, John Alejo merge project so John Alejo merge project so click on the create as we can see here we have now a database with no tables next thing we're going to do is click on the tab import and choose a file then go to the downloads look for the latest download and this is the file that we downloaded a while ago and this is the SQL file that we ne are needing right now click open then at the bottom find a button import and click OK click import so as we can see we, we load out now our SQ L database so we are now ready so this is where we left off when we go back to NetBeans when we run this file we can have this program and asking your name okay asking your address then it will uh, and are the execution for the program and you can see in your database when you open your page admin and click the browse it is automatically added here so that's what we what the last video is all about so the next video is all about perform selection in the mysql and embedding it into a java program so all we need to do is to leave uh, this behind and we go back to our NetBeans then we will create another class to this video and we will create another one by clicking right click on the default package click new and choose Java class then the template is still the same we will just change to 1 to 2 CL2 CL2 underscore your name format first name and your last name then click finish then next thing is to minimize uh, this thing so that we can make our um, editor uh, making more, more bigger for us to write our code wider so now we can just eliminate those comments that are we don't need and then next thing is to create our public or our main function static void main string arg so don't forget to add this main function so that your program will execute okay so next thing since we have already our connection last time as we go to the services we have our connection okay so if you forget to um, know how to load this connection you may go back to the previous or the first video or we can or you can go to the second video okay for now I'll be directly working on this one okay so all we need to do is to create the, again our connection in our database since we already loaded our driver 
So the first thing that we need for our connection is the connection class. So that is why we need to import import uh, Java that SQL connection class. We need this one for our connection. So we need the, that class connection. And we can name it to, you can use my connect or my DB connect or my DB con. That is the name of our object because that is your class and this is your object's object. And we can put it null first. So once we have now ready our object dbcon for our connection. So this is the instance of our class connection. So this connection class uh, have the capability to connect on our database connection. But we need to supply four parameters to connect on our database. The, those parameters are most are strings. So we need to create a variable uh, declaration string. We have your db url, your db uh, user, or un, you name, db pwp word, or the password, and then the db class. So those are the four uh, data that we need for us to connect in our database. So we need to get those data by this connection. So we can click on your connection. Where is your connection? As you can see, that is for the database John Alejo Merge Project. So this is your connection. So make sure if you have a lot of connection there, you're working on your um, in your services. Please make sure to know uh, what is that uh, what connection uh, um, is your database connected is connected so make sure to do that so right click on that and go to properties by the way you can double check on it by double clicking it and click ok uh, you can check that if that is having an error there is a problem on that but if there is an error that means as you can see if there is uh, solid line here as you can see on the in this icon uh, compare it to the tree there is no connection there this is a broken connection and this one as you can see is connected because the icon is not having the same icon of the, of the tree so now right click go to the properties another thing is also if you go right click on that as you can see there is connection you only you cannot click the connect only you can use the disconnect so meaning that is also connected in the database so right click properties and we need those things as we did last time we need the URL the, this one so click on that icon and highlight copy and use DB URL is equal to those what we copied and then dbu name we know that that is root db p word we know that that is empty and db class we know that that, that is driver class open that one highlight copy and paste it here so once we have now this data all we need to do is to try to connect in the database by using the try catch block okay so we use try and we use catch so to catch all the what we try to connect and we catch all those errors so to catch the errors we use the exception class and we created a variable x for now so x object x is holds all the exemption so what we can do is to output the exemption so we can know whatever the problem in our query we can see it here what is really the problem so we can debug and work on on that error 
So we can, last time we used the system out of print line. For this, we need to use also the G option pane so we can familiarize on that. So use G option pane that show message dialog. The first parameter is null and the message that we can, we need to up, we need to output is the object X and we display the get message. We also add some parameters for the title of the box. We can just say error, uh, db error or date um, database error. Okay, and we can just set icon for that. So for us to see it nicer, we can just move it here and add j option pane that show no that's error message okay so that's how we create our error so once we created our error message so let's try to work on our database so the first thing is to load our drivers using the class that for name and we need to use this variable to hold the value for our driver class next thing that we need to work with is our driver manager so that is also important so we need to import it so that we can use the driver manager import uh, Java, sorry, that's Java. That SQL, that driver manager. So here we can just use the driver manager, but we need to use our class of our connection, which is with my dbcon. So use that one, and then use driver manager that get connection we need to supply three parameters first is the url second is the username sorry uh, db first is the db url second is the db name and the third one is the db password so that is the line how we can connect to the uh, database. Okay, so next thing is to prepare our query statement. So to prepare our query statement, we use a statement class in our database. So that is why a, a, a statement class in our uh, predefined class in Java so we need to load it again here import that Java dot SQL that statement so it's already loaded so we can now use our SQL statement okay so create our object for SQL statement which is a statement you can name it what you want, your name of your object. You can use my s or my statement or my s. You can so my s dmt. You can do that. So then assign the name of the db connection variable or the dbcon, which is here also, because dbcon is equal to dbcon that create statement. So we can now use our statement later on. Uh, later on. So next is we can now once we are since we are going to select our data, we need uh, to use a class result set to store uh, some result value in our query. So we need to load again the result set class so we need to import here import java sql dot result 
set so that is the one so we are going to use result set and the name of your result so we can use my result okay so everything is ready uh, so everything so this one is all we need for us to really connect on our database first is this line that actually can uh, create an object my dbcon that really uh, necessary for us as you can see there everything is uh, dependent for our object dbcon okay and this one is also important because these are the things that we need for us to really connect on our database okay and then this one also is it will be used uh, now for our statement so right now all we need to do is to use now the object result to store our result uh, uh, in our to store our uh, what we get on our table in our query so all we need to do is use this one result uh, and use your mysql statements which is this one my s statement to whatever your statement in your database so use that one and use this function execute uh, query and use the mysql um, uh, syntax in selecting data in our tables which is select all from whatever table you are available in your database as we can see and go back to our PHP my admin we have our table student to to uh, to that stores our information here so all we need to do is use this one student and select all uh, student okay so our results uh, when we run it we know that we have data in our database we're assuming that we have when we, we perform it we have data here in our table we have four bunch of datas and we have columns so it is huge for us to handle uh, because this object now this my result will now hold all the data here from id column to name column, address column, and date added column. So all this information here will be temporarily stored into our object my result. So in order for us to access it individually by column, so we can we can effectively use it in our program. So we will separately get those data by column. As we can see here, it is by column. So we can grab all the data to the ID. We can grab all the data from the name. We can grab all the data for address and we can grab all the data for the date added. So we can, we can um, do it using all the ids uh, all the column names so to do that we need to create a variables to store temporarily all those information so all we need to do is create a string variable for us uh, no it depend it depends not all the strings but it depends uh, what data type you are uh, going to store in a particular column name so we can go to the structure to do that this is equivalent to describe in our SQL here we just <laughs> directly uh, clicking it but in going back to the uh, CMD uh, we need to type it uh, describe uh, uh, then the table names to them right now we just clickly uh, just directly clicking this structure so as we can see here we have now the types that we had the id it's in need uh, integer and name address and data times needs a string okay why we need a data time stream as we can see the value of that that one is uh, a combination of numbers as a special 
character so that is also can be string so going back here we need um, an integer of and for the ID we can to to really um, know what is that intended so we can that is for ID but we cannot do that because probably it might on if you will have a big program it might be use, you now using a same um, variable name so in my case uh, in my experience uh, I since if this is fetching or selecting you can put prefix for this so that you can know what is that variable is all about so like for me I will just set um, F or F ID that means that is a fetch ID uh, on this query so I can determine that that is this date uh, this variable uh, stores coming from the database or from the table so that's what what is my identifier in naming my uh, I variables and I need to create a string for for name and address and date added so F name and we also F address and F date added once we had already our variables to temporarily store our data from our database now we will now perform some looping in order or a loop in order for us to, to get individual row in our data from the data from the tables we need to loop it by row so to st you store it by column and you will loop, loop it by row to get a specific element in your record set so that means row 1 ID you can see that that is 1 row 1 name you can see that that tuple is still rows row 1 address you can see that that tuple is matuog tayasan row 1 column date added you can see that this tuple is that record going back uh, proceed to the next row row 2 row 2 id so you can see that that is a value of 2 row 2 column name and that is still also Jill Rose. Row 2, address, column, still see Mato Ogtayasan. Row 2, column, date added, as you can see, 20, 2021, 10, 21. Okay. Next, row 3, ID, we have a value of 3. Row 3, name, we have a value of John Benhart Alejo. Row 3, address, we have Matuog Tayasa Negros Oriental. Row 3, date added, we have 2023-0329-831-4. So as you can see, we can get individually by row. So that is how we analyze it in our program. So to do that, it is... Um, realistic to use a loop so here we have a lot of loops available we have three we have while we have four and do while but most often we use it a while here especially in in Java uh, we use while so to do that going back to your net beans and use the while uh, loop this one is what I dis, uh, discussed it a while ago, this will loop into individual rows in your table. So all we need to do is, since this is the object that holds those data right now, what we need to do is to put it on the while and we use a method next. This means this is to next every rows in your table. And it will stop until the last row. Then, what we're going to do 
is to assign in the once it will uh, uh, it will loop each row it will be assigned to a temporary variable so that means you will going to assign for example f id so you will assign uh, it so that is a first row and you are going to assign it to a column i id so obviously to the column id is how you're going to good, uh, put it get um, my result that get end okay since int is uh, that the data type for the that column is integer and the parameter for this is the name of the column as you can see there the name of the column is capital I D so you need to be more specific to put their capital I D because if that is not the same cap, uh, uh, casing it will make have an error so this one first row and first row and column ID so this that that one it gets all ID from 1, 2, 3, 4. If you look for, you can see that individual uh, rows here. Okay? Individual uh, rows here will be added. So if you can just test it, we can use a system out that print line to test our code. So right now, right click and go to project and run file. As you can see, you can see all the IDs here in our output. One, two, three, four. Based on our one, two, three, four here. If we can, uh, if we will also add for the name, so F name. So my result that get string. So why string for now? It is string because our our name has a data type of varchar that is equivalent to string in Java. So that is why right now we have the get string. And next thing that we have is the column name exact column name for our data database name no the table column name so we have here name so to do that we can output also uh, instead of fid we can use f name and run it again as you can see it will upload uh, print all the names in our table so that's how we do that because in case if that is not the same like this you can okay you can still this <laughs> you can still the same sorry uh, corrected I think I, I thought that it is the same <laughs> in PHP that is very uh, it's very case sensitive okay so it's still the same but if that it is wrong as you can see there you can have an error column name is not found because there is no names column in our table um, student so it has an error this error is what we already done here in the cuts exemption that's why it's very important for us to use the try block so that we are trying to connect on the database and perform SQL queries. At the same time, if there is an error, you have a catch that exemption is catching all the errors from your try, uh, try a block so that the catch block will also, um, uh, you can do whatever you want, especially not putting the errors you uh, encounter in your try block. So that is important for us to what is really important using the try block uh, try catch block so here 
you know that one so to be asked to really uh, oriented as a programmer what is really uh, just stay what what I had uh, in my best practice is to uh, is to copy the column names here in our database to exactly uh, here so to make you uh, know that this one is intended for the column name. So let us continue in storing on temporal values because we know that uh, this part is actually getting it and um, getting it all. So we can continue by also for the address if address is equal to my result that get a string and then the column name for your for your address and for f date added it's equal to my result the get string Uh, and then date time added so everything is set so I can also show you also is uh, it is different if you will output uh, inside the while and outside the while so a while ago we outputted uh, inside the while so we can uh, let's try uh, system system that out that print line and say f name so in this one you can see the loop but if you can if you will use uh, output here the same statement outside of the while you can see a uh, different result uh, see you have a error so in this scope uh, in outside the while F name is not been initialized meaning there is no value but inside of the while there is a value so that is the difference in having uh, outputting here and outputting here so inside the while it is been initialized um, F name is have a value having here in the while we don't have a value for that uh, F name so how we can make an output that contains uh, all of those information so to do that if we are going to use the system out that print line we can use a variable to store all the data because here we have we can also use that one here directly if you're going to use the system auto print line so so we can directly we can um, directly output uh, the same if we can just follow the format here we can just uh, first the ID the name address and date and time we can just say F ID uh, plus concatenate uh, then slash T for tab and F name then uh, we can also slash T and add for address uh, slash t 
for date added. So I think that's is working. So we can have an output like this. Okay, so we able to output uh, this format. Uh, so we can add your column names here at the top of the file. We can just say id slash t name slash t address slash t date added date time added so as you can see uh, what is the problem a uh, slash uh, we have slash there so as you can see we have now columns okay the reason why i have uh, output it, it up 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 the while because if i will move it here this one every row have its own columns column name so that is also uh, the problem so as you can see one loop id uh, the, the column and then the value then a second loop for the second row the same id and then the um, the value so id the value so it keeps on repeating the column name because of the loop so do not um, if you are intended to output some column names you need to put you don't need to put it inside the while loop because it is a loop it always it always keep on uh, looping so for you to uh, to be able to get uh, one column like what we had you need to make it outside of the while to make like your output like this okay so that is how we intend for our uh, we need to output on the uh, system auto print line so how about in G option uh, pane so in G option pane is not similar to uh, G, uh, on the system auto print line uh, a, because it will be it went up popping so we need to display it once in a G option uh, dialog box for you to be able to show it uh, in one box or dialog so here all we need to do is to um, create a variable that stores the, the the output so all we need to do is add a string output holder uh, for you to to store all your format here then after that is assign the format so use that one and assign that format uh, to, he, to here so we can just copy our format and paste it here okay then after you start it in the variable that is the time you have to output it on a j option uh, pain box so j option pain that show message that show message dialog sorry for that null and then the hold out uh, and then the output holder so on that uh, we are able to create our variable holder and inside of our while we initialize the value of it and then we output so what will happen will look like this 
so we output but the only the last data is only captured okay why is it because we every time it loops whatever the value it will replace so all we need to do is to capture everything because it is um it is uh, what we i expected because uh, every loop there is a variable here so every loop what will happen it will just always replace to the next value so the last value is this one uh, Mofi Alejo so after the loop the last value of the variable is this so in order for us to keep all the data we concatenate it by using this one plus sign so whatever the value it keeps on adding adding it again so by use of this it now turns like this so as you can see we have now from one uh, Jill Rose two Jill Rose uh, three John Benhart and four so we have now more data so to add uh, to add line of to it I think we need to add a slash n hopefully it works here slash n and run it again okay so that's how we do it so we can how have two data more data so we have one two three four five so all the all the things are here now so we have for the id the name and then the date added so what is also lacking here so is the space in this part for the address so space space and space here for the address and then we can also add the column here by having the ID name address date time added then don't forget to put a slash n slash n now slash n so run it again so we have now the column name so id name address date and time added so everything uh, works as expected we are output is using this system out at print line and we output also for the um, for the G option pin so now if if add uh, if this class in the first program if you will run it and as another data uh, okay for example uh, Elvin Kaliao uh, set address to Matug uh, Tayasan or Matug so it will load up to the database so when we run it again here in run file we can see that we have a fifth data which is Elvin Kalamatu that we add a little while ago. So everything is syncing and everything is working right now. So that is uh, how we, uh, uh, it's all about in this video. So last thing is we need to do is to back up it again. So go to to end up this video. We need to back up. So go to again to the drive folder go back to your uh, backup projects create another folder for today or for and then 3 29 2023 20, uh, it's now 8 um, 28 a.m. you can now have this oh this is not 29 sorry for that it is now 30 it's now 30 for today it's now 30 so 30 so going back to netbin project locate where is your where is your uh, project save so all we need to do is to highlight everything 
and then copy go to file explorer and also put here in this address bar you can put and paste and go back one folder here so we can copy this one copy uh, okay go to the drive go to the disk file and just okay for a while open this one first and drop wait until it finish to upload okay it's already uploaded one more thing is go to php my admin go to the browser again go to php my admin as we can see our student we have uh, this one also here so we need to back up go to export and click uh, choose format sql and click export okay, once it is downloaded show in folder we have there this one now go to the drive and then this is the downloaded sql file drag it here for your backup so it's now uploaded so everything is packed up every uh then all we need to do is to close everything so that everyone cannot see your codes uh, for your privacy or you can temporarily delete it because it is already back up so thank you uh, for watching this video hope you learned something with me uh, see you soon bye bye